Hi, welcome. In this video, I'm going to go over a little bit about structs, user-defined structure types. So let's get started. So this is the content for module six, IO stream structs and intro to classes. Um, I want to start this video out by talking about structs. For program four, we're going to be using structs. So I want to um, you know, introduce, make sure that you have an understanding about how to use a struct, where it gets declared in the program, how to use the dot operator, et cetera. So let's get started. All right, so first let's go over um, that a struct is a stepping stone to understand classes. So we're going to get into classes, but we're gonna start with structs. So a struct does not have member functions. It's a way to store data, but uh, different types of data as one, um, it's not really called an object, it's called an instance, structs are not, it's actually until you get to classes, that's when they're called objects. But anyway, you can take a bunch of data, like you can take strings and integers and character arrays and double arrays and doubles and all kinds of uh, mixed types of data and put them all together into one, uh, one structure. And then it, you can access all of that data by using what's called the dot operator. And then a class takes that to the next step because a class has member variables and member data, but then it also has member functions to manipulate that data. So we're going to eventually start creating classes, but we're gonna start out by just doing uh, a struct. So let's talk about uh, structs. So structs are going to be defined globally at the top of your program. So it can be used throughout your program. You just use this keyword struct, then you put the name of the of it. So in this case, the keyword struct is CDA account, CD account, not CDA, CD account. And then you put whatever kind of data, mixed types of data inside of there. So in this case, we're going to have a double for the balance, a double for the interest rate, and an integer for the term. So you can make any kind of struct. You could make a Let's just make another example of a struct here, if I can get my pen here. So we could make another type of struct. You could have struct student. And then inside it's a, just like everything else in C++, you have an opening and a closing curly brace. So you have a block of code. So in here you could have a, uh, a string for the first name a string for the last name. You could have a double uh, grades array. You could have an integer for the ID. So you can basically, we're not gonna use any, we're creating a new data type out of data types that we already have. So we're not going to add member functions to our structs. Everything in a struct by default is public, which means that when you define a struct, all of the data in that struct and the ability to access all of the fields or member variables. So in a struct, it's actually called fields, but we can start saying the words like member variables and stuff like that because uh, we are going to get into classes. So it's a very similar concept. You still use the dot operator and everything. It's just that classes goes the next step and adds member functions. All right, so when you declare a struct object or an instance, you just put your new data type and then these are variable names. So this is a variable name, my account, and this is a variable name, your account. So using the struct that we just did, I think it was called a student. I could say student, S1, S2, S3. So just as an example, those are that's declaring instances of type student. And then to access the fields within the struct, you use what's called the dot operator. So the nice thing about the way structs work is that once you've declared objects or instances of your new data type, you can uh, access any of the fields within there or the member variables when we get to classes. And when you do that, then it just becomes the data type that it is. So for example, my account dot balance, that's a double. If you said your account, your account, oh, it's a capital A, your account dot term, 
The data type of that is an integer. The data type of my account is CD account. The data type of your account is CD account. The data type of your account dot term, that says term T-E-R-M, is an integer. The data type of your account dot interest rate is a double and et cetera. All right, so this is what it looks like in placement in your program. So at the top, you have your, obviously you would have your header comment up here above here. Then you have your preprocessor directives. You have your new using namespace standard, which doesn't need to be global. You can put that in each function that uses, um, that uses the st standard namespaces. We might do a little bit with namespaces later in the semester. Then you define your, this should be indented. I don't know what happened to the indentation of here, but it's okay. So then you define your struct here at the top. And then this is your, um, this would be your function prototype. And then this is a function definition down here. And then this is your main function. So just the location of where the struct goes in your code is going to be up here at the top of your program globally. So it becomes available to all of the functions in your program. And then you can see here we are uh, using the dot operator to access the fields within that. I'm gonna demonstrate this in an actual compiler in a moment. All right, so I'm gonna exit out of this PowerPoint slide and do a little demonstration with uh, structs in um, online here. So I've already put this code online here in the compiler. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. All right, so this is the same thing. I have a, I'm not sure why, I don't think I need, I'm doing any strings in here, so I'm not really sure why I need string. Sometimes things just get left. Yeah, so let's uh, go through this code and take a look at it. So this part up here is where I'm defining my structure. I use keyword struct. The name of my struct is CD account, and it has some fields if I wanted to define Another struct, I could define my struct student. It would be the same way, struct. The name is student, and it's a block of code. There is a semicolon at the end here, and then I could just add my fields. Oh, I took out the string. So I'll just, I'll just do int id and uh, double grades. Maybe we'll just put an array size 100 or 100 grades, et cetera. So I took out the string. So this is just how you would define it. You decide what type of data you wanna put into your structure and you can fill it with all different types of data. There, uh, I could put a character array for the last name because I, I took out the string thing. So we'll just put a character array for the first name. All right, so anyway, that's how you would define it. You can you just decide what data types you wanna put inside of your structure and then each one, so this, if I declare an object or an instance of type student, then that's type student and whatever that is, dot ID would be an integer, dot grades would be a double array, dot F name would be a character array. And then you can pass it to a function. You can either pass it to the function by value Remember that if I were to pass it to the function by value, then it must have a value. Like I can't call the print data function if I have an empty, uh, if I have an empty object. It needs to have data in it in order to do pass by value. Pass by reference, I need to have a variable of that data type that's being passed by reference. I'm oh, just making sure I'm recording. Okay, so let's just go through this and see uh, what happens. So we could also try it. Look, if I declare my account, I'm declaring an object of or an instance of CD account. What if I were to try to print it before I fill it? It should not work because I didn't, I didn't initialize anything in here, which means the data shouldn't have any values. I have a feeling it's going to uh, zero it out. So technically in C++, everything should not be initialized to zero, but uh, for some reason, uh, when you new compilers now uh, zero things out. So that demonstration was kinda, oh, I forgot I have to stop. 
kind of not, it should, this technically should not, should have caused a problem, but nowadays new compilers uh, tend to set everything to zero. You can, you can in a struct, you can initialize everything. So I could say my initial balance is 100 and this is like a constructor and my uh, interest rate is 0 0.5. So this would be, if I were to uh, just, so when we get to classes, we're going to have constructors and there there is usually a default constructor, which means that once you declare an object of your new data, of your new class, then you set a, a constructor that sets up all of the fields and all of the data and everything in your class to the default amount that you want it to be. So I can declare this and then set it to be like that. So then what will happen is when this gets declared, it gets those values. And when this gets declared, it gets those values. So if I go to print it, hopefully it will work as expected. It should print those values. So you can see that it prints uh, the interest rate, the term nine months, and the balance of $100, which is what I set it. So you can you can set, and some compilers uh, complain if you're struct, if you don't initialize values in your struct, sometimes the compiler might complain and want you to initialize everything. So you can set default values uh, when you declare your struct if you um, end up having issues with that. All right, so now uh, we don't really care about that because we're going to fill our, we're gonna fill it so there's two ways that we can fill it. So one thing that you can do is you can say my account equals your account, or you can assign one struct to another. Obviously you can do that if you're doing a pass by value parameter. When I pass this by value, it's actually, this function is declaring its own instance or object of type CD account, and then it's assign getting assigned all the values of the parameter that's being passed to it. So there's two ways to get the data. One is by reference. Remember, you must pass a variable. So we can call this get data function right here, and you can pass it one of your objects of type CD account. Another way to fill it is this, and these functions, I wrote these functions, get data, get data. These aren't automatic functions in, that are in some library. This is my new data type, and I these are my functions. So the other way I've chosen to fill it is with this function called get data to. And what that function is going to do is it's going to fill all of the fields. And then the return type is CDA account. Both of these functions do the same thing. One does it as a return type and the other one does it by reference. This function just prints the information onto the screen. So we're not really doing anything with our data. This, this is just getting you... Um, in program four, you're going to have a struct and you're going to be passing that struct by reference to all of your functions because you're going to want to reset each game and you're going to want to have all of that data about all of the games instead of passing them as separate uh, variables. When you pass the struct, you get all of that information. So it makes it a, a much easier to pass things to functions because all of the data gets passed as part of the struct. So let's uh, go down here at the get data function first. So I've declared an object called my account. I'm passing by reference my account to the get data function. So I jump down here to the get data function. The get data function takes in my account, but it's going to declare its own local variable called the account. So I could do this more than once with my account, your account, his account, her account, their account and just uh, Susie's account, Tom's account, you can just keep on using, reusing this. So this uh, this is a generic name that every time you pass uh, an account, every time you pass an object here by reference, it declares its own name. And then it just asks the user to enter the balance. And then it's gonna go use the dot operator to access that balance use the dot operator to access the interest rate and use the dot operator to access the term. Remember that this is a double, this is a double, and this is an integer. And then when it's done, it's been filled by reference because they're sharing the same location in memory. The second one 
is to, it's going to clear a temporary CD account. And again, fill that one, each field one by one, asking one by one because it's much easier. But the key here is understanding that it's using the dot operator. So this is a double, this is a double, this is an integer. Then it's going to return it. The return type is a CDA account. It matches the return type of the function. And then this function is going to have all of that temporary data and it's going to get assigned to your account. And then I just added a print function here and this code is available on Canvas for you to download and practice. I added a print data function here. So if you come down here, uh, this is to print to two decimal places. So again, it's going to make its own, it's going to make its own copy. This is passed by value. So if it should have values in it in order to do it, and then it's going to print the information onto the screen. So hopefully this gives you a little overview. We will be doing structs in more detail uh, throughout the rest of the semester, but I just wanted to make sure you had a little bit of introduction and um, you know, it's kind of assumed that in your introductory course, you did uh, get some kind of uh, experience learning about structures. We will have structures in program four. And so take a look at it. And if you have any questions, please let me know.